All right, my friends, just a quick little clip about keeping track of the signs of trig functions and their graphs. Um, if you're over here in the first quadrant, so that means you're just somewhere over here, you've cranked up to this angle, um, cosine pulls off the shadow of this thing onto the horizontal axis, right? So if you take the shadow of this thing down there, you see that this shadow is pointing along the positive x direction. So cosine is gonna be positive here, right? Sine peels off the shadow that's on the opposite side of the known angle, so that's going to pull off this side. So that's also going to be positive, that's pointing along the positive y direction. So cosine and sine are both positive. Tangent, of course, is just sine over cosine, so that would be positive over positive, so tangent itself is positive in this quadrant. If you come over here, um, so you've cranked over to some angle like this. What's going on here with cosine, of course, cosine again takes the projection down onto the horizontal axis. So your cosine is now going to be negative. You're here along the negative x-axis. Sine finds the projection that's kind of opposite of this reference angle. It finds the projection onto the uh, vertical axis, let's say. So you're really going to be looking at kind of this segment which is still pointing along positive y, right? So sine is gonna be positive over here. And again, tangent is sine over cosine, so you'd have plus over minus. Um, so your tangent function um, is gonna be negative here because po anything positive over negative is gonna give you a negative thing. Um, if we continue with this pattern, if we come down here, if you're in quadrant three, so here we are in quadrant three, you've cranked all the way around to some angle over here. Um, Again, cosine, what that's going to do is find the projection of this thing onto the horizontal axis. So that's going to be here, and you notice that's still negative. That's pointing along the negative horizontal axis. So your cosine is still negative there. Um, your sine function is going to take the projection, the vertical projection of this thing. Um, so that's going to be here. You notice that's now uh, in the negative, um, in the uh, negative y direction. So your sine is going to be negative there. Um, and again, tangent is sine over cosine, so that would be negative over negative. Well, that's going to make a positive. So tangent's going to be positive in this coordinate, um, or in this uh, quadrant. Um, finally, wrapping up over here, um, if you're in the fourth quadrant, you've you know cranked all the way around to here, so you're somewhere in this quadrant. Um, and again, your cosine is going to take the projection of this thing onto the horizontal axis. Um, so cosine will peel this part off. That, you notice, is along sort of positive x. This thing is in the positive uh, uh, x direction. And so that's going to be, uh, cosine's going to be positive there. Your vertical projection of this thing is going to be here. Um, that's going to be negative. Um, and so then, uh, again, tangent is sine over cosine, or a negative divided by a positive, which, of course, will give you a net negative. Um, and so that kind of summarizes the signs of these things. Um, if we go to graph them, and you can kind of see that this all comes together if you go to graph the functions, um, anywhere in quadrant one, your horizontal projection is, is going to be positive. And so cosine is going to be maximized here, positive throughout quadrant one until that horizontal projection goes to zero when you get to 90 degrees. So that's why your cosine function, when you graph it, it starts here and then it goes to zero once you get, um, once you get to 90 degrees where you're getting out of the first quadrant. Um, as you continue to, to crank the angle, the cosine is going to switch signs here. This horizontal projection flopped around. Um, so it's going to switch signs um, and become very negative when you get to pi radians over here. Um, so this, again, cosine is keeping track of the horizontal projection. So horizontal projection is positive, 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 getting smaller, zero. Then that goes negative, negative, negative. And the horizontal projection is going to continue to be negative while you're over here in quadrant three. So cosine continues to be negative while you're in quadrant three and then goes back to being positive when you're in quadrant four. Um, so there's your cosine wave developing. Um, and then sine is really kind of keeping track of this uh, vertical projection. You notice at, when you're up here, your vertical projection, your vertical shadow, if you want, of this hypotenuse is always gonna be positive. So sine stays positive throughout the first two um, coordinates. So of course the vertical projection zero when you're here and then it gets bigger and bigger. So sine starts at zero, stays positive throughout the first two quadrants.
y. And then you notice the sine function starts to go negative here. Uh, the, the vertical projection is negative throughout the last two um, quadrants. So sine, your sine wave is going to look like this. Um, and then finally we get to the um, tangent function, which again is, is really sine over cosine, opposite over adjacent. Um, so you're really looking at the ratio of this opposite side to the adjacent side. The opposite side's so small when you start here, right? So the opposite side is gonna be zero. So you know tangent's gonna start at zero. Um, and then as you crank this angle up toward 90 degrees, that opposite side gets really big and the adjacent side gets small. So tangent's gonna blow up. Um, when you're at 90 degrees, it's gonna blow up to infinity. So your tangent function is really gonna take off here like this. Uh, heading for uh, positive infinity there. Um, and when you get over to this side, right, your, um, again, it's, it's like opposite over adjacent. So your opposite side will be this big positive thing, big positive thing over the adjacent, which would be a uh, very small negative thing. So big positive over small negative um, will give you big negative. So it's gonna be big, um, small and negative. So your, your tangent's gonna, start coming back from here and then by the time you're at pi radians once you've cranked all the way over your opposite side your vertical projection is is going to be um, near zero um, so tangent itself is going to be near zero so it's going to kind of come from negative infinity and head up to um, being zero here at pi radians um, and then um, this is just going to continue as you as you start to crank this angle your vertical projection is going to start to grow um, and so your tangent function is going to be positive throughout this quadrant and growing. Um, so it's, it's just going to take off toward positive infinity. Uh, and then finally, when you get over here, um, when you've just passed what's this 270 degrees, if you're at an angle here, your tangent function is going to be this big negative vertical projection divided by a small positive um, horizontal projection. So big negative over a small positive um, will still give you a very big negative. So it's gonna start here at a big negative number near, near infinity um, and then head up toward being zero um, once we get back here to two pi. And then the, and then the cycle just repeats. Um, so there's your graphs of your three um, uh, basic trig functions. Uh, and then of course there you have the rear um, reciprocal uh, functions like like secant, cosecant, and cotangent, which are just the reciprocals of these things.